Welcome to Beowulf Part 2. You guys did an amazing job talking about the Christian influences uh, that are present in Beowulf in the discussion board for yesterday. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about some of the history behind those Christian influences, collect the things you guys brought up um, on PowerPoint slides, and then talk a little bit about pagan influences that you might not be familiar with. So how did Christianity come to Britain? Well, it was through the Romans. In 43 CE, the Romans invade Britain under the Emperor Claudius, um, and maintain a presence there for the extent of the Roman Empire. Christianity is made legal there in 313 CE, um, and up until the Romans leave, which is in 410. And so there's about 100 years of consistent uh, practice of Christianity in Britain before the Romans leave. And then around 450, the Angles and the Saxons from northern Germany invade the Isles of Britain. Then from 450 to 871, we get something called the Heptarchy, um, which means seven kingdoms. So we have a collection of seven different independent nations called East Anglia, Essex, Kent, Sussex, Wessex, Mercia, and Northumbria, um, up until 871, in which year King Alfred the Great unifies all of England, um, and the, the Isle remains unified under its own kind of leadership until the Norman Conquest in 1066 when the French invade. So while all this is happening, we have lots of Christian things happening simultaneously. Um, so in 597 CE, and this is during the age of the Heptarchy, right, with the seven different kingdoms, um, Augustine, or Augustine, the Archbishop of Canterbury, reintroduces Christianity to Britain, which had fallen out of practice um, when the Angles and the Saxons invaded from northern Germany. Right after this, in 601, Augustine baptizes the first Christian British king, Ethelbert of Kent, Okay, and then by the mid-7th century or the 650s, Christianity has won out in popularity across Britain. So if you remember from the last video, we said Beowulf probably happened in the 500s, was written down in the 700s, and the manuscript we have is from the 1000s CE. It becomes clear that the uh, rise of Christianity has really influenced the tale, um, or at least the telling of this kind of older pagan story that really properly should not have Christian elements in it. As I said at the beginning, you guys did a really wonderful job of picking out the Christian elements in the tale, uh, but I just wanted to round them up really quickly onto PowerPoint slides in the video. So it's important to note that the character's religious point of view and the narrator's religious point of view are sometimes different, but they largely um, enmesh together. So both the characters and the narrator make references to Christian elements. For instance, Beowulf and Hrothgar often refer to God, Lord, the Almighty, etc., um, and a specific example is that Hrothgar, um, at line 927 to 930, thanks God and not Beowulf for killing Grendel. Um, Hrothgar's bard also tells of the creation story, um, which, given that it's capitalized in the manuscript, we probably think it's the biblical creation story. The narrator describes Grendel as a descendant of Cain, um, and our nice ekrisis about the hilt of uh, Beowulf's sword depicts the flood destroying the giants. A more extended example we should talk about is Beowulf versus Grendel as a recasting of David versus Goliath, or perhaps an original casting. Um, and I think Jake pointed this out as well as maybe some other people. Um, but we can break this down into even finer um, comparisons here. So in both stories, there's a king plagued by a monster, a young foreigner shows up, people doubt him, um, so he must boast about the ex his experience fighting monsters in order to gain their trust. He is seen as heaven sent. Um, and then he fights alone without any weapons or armor, and eventually decapitates the monster with its own or its mother's sword. We get more references to Grendel as one of these um, kind of antediluvian giants from the Bible, and antediluvian is just a fancy word that means before the flood, um, but the most prominent is that Grendel drinks blood from the veins alongside flesh, and this places him before um, the part in Genesis where God prohibits the consumption of blood alongside flesh in 9.4. So among all these uh, Christian elements, we still see some pagan elements. For instance, we get the story of Sigmund and the dragon, um, which is a part of Norse mythology. Um, and we also get idolatry at lines 175 to 80, with a mention of pagan shrines and idols of gods. And lastly, there seems to be a sustained focus on worldly glory, right? which should map onto our previous understanding of kleos um, in the Greek epic myths. So given all this history that we now know about how Christianity came to the British Isles from Rome, um, we can pretty safely say that all of these Christian elements mixed in with the pagan elements are due to borrowing or influence. Um, and we can use this comparative method to better understand Beowulf um, and its contents.